Section three of Stories for God's Little Ones by Father John Koenig. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Maria Therese. Peter Patrick Pancake. The doctor tapped his fingers on his desk. Most unusual, he murmured aloud. He was referring to Peter Patrick Pancake, the boy who couldn't laugh or smile or chuckle. And unusual it was, because he had just tickled Peter Patrick Pancake under the chin with a feather. Any other boy or girl would have chuckled right off, but not Peter. Peter twitched one cheek, then the other cheek, but, try as he might, he couldn't laugh, he couldn't smile, he couldn't chuckle. Most unusual, the doctor murmured again. And unusual it was, because otherwise Peter was a real live-wire boy. He could fly kites, roller skate, eat ice cream cones, blow up balloons. But try as he might, he couldn't laugh, he couldn't smile, he couldn't chuckle. And try he often did. When Peter was putting on his coat in another room, the doctor again tapped his fingers on his desk and said, I'm afraid I haven't any pills that can help him. With concern, Peter's mother exclaimed, But there must be something we can do, doctor. The doctor tapped a little more and answered, The only cure I know is for Peter to see such a happy sight he will just have to laugh right out with joy. He nodded his head and tapped some more and repeated, Just have to. That night, Mrs. Pancake, remembering that Saturday was Peter's birthday, said to Auntie Till, Mrs. Pancake's twin sister, who was staying for a visit, Perhaps a birthday party might be the happy sight. Perhaps it might, repeated Auntie Till. And so it was that, when Peter came in from play on Saturday afternoon, his playmates, hidden in the dining room, all yelled, Surprise! Peter could see Tommy and Jerry and Sandy and Kathy, and a ceiling full of balloons, and a pile of presents, one boy high, and a birthday cake with just the right number of candles. It made a happy sight. Peter twitched one cheek, then he twitched the other cheek. He twitched and he twitched, but, try as he might, he couldn't laugh, he couldn't smile, he couldn't chuckle. It wasn't what the doctor ordered. Disappointed, Mrs. Pancake said to Auntie Till, I wonder what the happy sight might be. I wonder, repeated Auntie Till. One week went by. Mrs. Pancake kept thinking and wondering. If only Peter could laugh and smile and chuckle, sighed Mrs. Pancake. If only he could, repeated Auntie Till. It wasn't too long, however, before the second happy sight was ready. One night, right after supper, Mrs. Pancake took Peter by the hand down into the playroom. On a raised platform over in a corner of the playroom stood a fully equipped moon station. It had moon vehicles and launching pads and rocket ships, quite enough to take one's breath away. Peter bubbled with joy. He twitched one cheek, then he twitched the other cheek. He twitched and he twitched, but, try as he might, he couldn't laugh. He couldn't smile. He couldn't chuckle. It wasn't what the doctor ordered. The following Sunday morning, when all the pancakes were home from Mass, Mrs. Pancake took Peter to the back window. She parted the curtains and pointed. But she didn't have to point, because Peter nearly jumped through the window with joy. For there on the lawn stood the brown and white pony, with regular cowboy harness, and Peter's name written across the saddle in silver buttons. It was a truly happy sight. Mrs. Pancake watched Peter anxiously. He twitched one cheek, then he twitched the other cheek. He twitched and he twitched, but, try as he might, he couldn't laugh, he couldn't smile, he couldn't chuckle. It wasn't what the doctor ordered. When dinner time came that particular Sunday, it seemed much too soon for Peter. But Mrs. Pancake called him only once, and the brand new cowboy swung off his pony and onto the ground. Not a whimper, not a frown, not a single sour note. He tied the pony reins to the post, and in he came to wash for dinner. Peter Patrick Pancake didn't know how to laugh or smile or chuckle, but how to obey he most certainly knew. That night Peter was sitting on the side of his bed, buttoning his pajama top. Making not the slightest fuss, his guardian angel sat down beside him. Peter, the angel said in a very kindly manner, I want you to see the shine a good deed makes when seen from heaven. So saying, the guardian angel turned a very special camera upon the wall, and the camera began to play a moving picture. 
Peter's eyes popped because he was in it. The picture showed dinner time that particular Sunday. It showed Peter's mother calling him for dinner. It showed Peter swinging off his pony without a whimper or frown or single sour note. It showed him skipping up the steps for dinner. But as he entered the house, there began to glow around him a radiant and beautiful light. It was softer than summer evening sunlight. It was delightful beyond compare. And little wonder, this was the shine Peter's act of obeying made in heaven. Peter almost burst with gladness at the sight. With not a single twitch, with not even a try at a twitch, he began to laugh and smile and chuckle. It was such a happy sight that he just had to laugh and smile and chuckle. So joyously did he laugh, so heartily did he chuckle, that his mother in the parlor dropped a potato chip, and Auntie Till dropped another. Who could it be in Peter's room? Mrs. Pancake gasped. Who could it be? repeated Auntie Till. It took but a moment to open the door to learn the answer. It was Peter himself, sitting alone once more on the side of his bed, his pajama top still unbuttoned, and laughs and smiles and chuckles bouncing from him in happy procession. As best he could, Peter told what happened, and soon laughs and smiles and chuckles were bouncing from everyone in even happier procession. Peter Patrick Pancake had found at last just what the doctor ordered. Or rather, his guardian angel had found it, the shine a good act since to heaven. End of Peter Patrick Pancake